Rossi, I know you love a uh, Dougie Mac hot take, right? And so uh, he, he had a pretty hot take uh, a couple of weeks ago, and, and I'll preface it by saying I agree with him in that there should be opportunity and there should be no sacred cows as good as this group is, and I've said it before on the pod, as group as this generation is individually and collectively, there can be changes, and if the opportunity to upgrade exists over there, uh, nobody should be off the table. Yeah, Doug, I read your piece and you talk up the acquisition of Balogun, but then you go on to say that him and Pepe are going to battle for years to come. And that dovetails with a tweet you sent out after Pepe scored that stoppage time winner for PSV against Sevilla in the Champions League, in which you suggested that a goal like that could propel him above Balogun and into the starting role for the U.S. So you don't think there's a defined pecking order there right now. You think Balogun and Pepe, that is an open competition over the next two, three years for the U.S.'s starting center forward job. Of course, of course, Masi, it, it has to be. I mean, look, we knew that coming in, Fuller and Balogun was going to get every opportunity to start. And it's actually pretty interesting. Like, the, his first match, he started against Mexico in a continental semifinal. Um, you think of some of the legends of, of this program, Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey, Christian Pulisic, for most people, probably the top three U.S. players ever. None of them started their first game. They all came in off, off the bench. Balogun has started every game he's been available for. Um, so far, I, I believe he started all six games uh, under Greg Berhalter um, and he's done well. He's been good, but he hasn't been great. And, um, you know, that's not a slight on Balogun. He's a fantastic player. Uh, the U.S. team is really lucky to have him, but he doesn't start indefinitely forever, no matter what. It's going to come down to performance. And, you know, I, I'm not saying that the goal that Pepe scored uh, in, in, you know, to put PSG in the Champions League uh, knockout stage for the first time in 16 years. This is a, a you know a club that's won the European title before, a legendary club. Um, but it but it helps. And if you look at his entire body of work, all he's done um, since the World Cup, since not making the World Cup team, is score goals. Whether it's for the U.S., whether it's for PSV. Um, you know he's playing for Groningen last year, obviously in the in the Dutch league. I mean his stats are insane. So I don't know if you saw this this tweet, Masi, and I'm gonna I brought some receipts. So I'm gonna check my notes here. So. <laughs> Uh, Fuller and Balogun, uh, he has, let's see, Fuller, Balogun has four goals in 12 league on games this year. He's got one goal in his last nine games for club and country. Ricardo Pepe in 235 minutes this year for, for uh, excuse me, uh, for PSV in UEFA Champions League qualifying, in the Champions League group stage, and in the Eredivisie, he has six goals in 235 minutes. That's a goal every 39 minutes. Right. By contrast, Balogun is scoring about one every what is it about a goal every 190 minutes in France's top league. I know we made a big deal. He's the first scorer to uh, U.S. player to score 20 goals in a top five league. You know, the French league is 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 good, but it's pretty recently that we've been talking about, you know, the big five in Europe. It was always the big four. And for me, Ligue 1 is still a distant, a distant fifth. Balogun is not even he's not the top scorer on his team. He's got three players on his team ahead of him with more goals this year. Um, two of them aren't even strikers. So, again, you know, you don't get to be the starting striker forever. And, I, and actually, I think when you look at what Pepe's done, even with the U.S. team, five goals in his last eight games, he had five goals off the bench. What did Greg Berhalter do in the last game of the year? He started them together. So I think he's already, um, you know, he, he, there's already a desire to reward Pepe for his, his production. Um, and a goal like that for, PS, for PSV, I just think, like, He's doing everything he can. Balogun's not playing in the Champions League. Pepe is. He's hardly playing for PSV. He's got Luke de Jong ahead of him. He's a 33-year-old veteran international player, former Barcelona striker, all that. Pepe hasn't started a game this season for, for PSV, which I think is incredible. I thought for sure there'd be some squad rotation in the area of Izzy, we'd be getting some games. Um, but it's one thing to come in for de Jong late in the game. Uh, PSV is an absolute wagon. They're destroying that league. Uh, Pepe's goals have been, you know, late in games when he's come on. It's the it's a end of a blowout. He's getting a goal from the penalty spot. You know, that's not a knock on him. He's doing what he can with the time time he gets. And Lex always talks about seizing the moment. Um, and what have you done for me lately? Like, what else can Ricardo Pepe do? He comes on as a sub in the Champions League um, and scores on the road in Spain against a good Sevilla team. Um, to, to knock them out and again to put his team a legendary European team back in the knockout stage you saw the reaction on the sideline from Peter Bosch's coach from the coaching staff by the way Pepe didn't even play in the next game the next league game for PSV so you know thanks a lot for that but 
I just think that's the kind of goal that when Greg, you know, Greg Berhalter, who was already noticing what Pepe was doing for club and country, you know, he looks at, at a player taking advantage of a moment like that. Um, and that's got to be something that, that he remembers where if, if Balogun, you know, continues to slump a little bit um, and there's a, you know, a crucial game and we know the Nations League semifinals coming up in March and Pepe's scoring and Balogun isn't, why shouldn't Ricardo Pepe get the start uh, ahead of Fulham and Balogun? And, you know, maybe they can both play together, but I do think that it's going to be one striker for the most part. And right now, um, you know, it's really hard for me to keep to keep Pe Pepe well, on the and, bench, and even if, you know, yeah. In fairness to Balogun, it's clear that you hate him, right. but uh, he did have two assists <laughs> this past weekend against Ren. He can impact the game in other ways, uh, Doug, but now yeah, I hear wow. you. Wow. And th I mean, those are some impressive stats you brought to the table. I can't deny that. What you hear, that. Mossy, what you hear is the conductor of the Pepe train, yes. all right? Just hooting and hollering over there. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.